Well, thank you so much, Dr. Crawford, for the opportunity, and also it's my pleasure to speak with the audience, uh, urology colleagues of eurotoday.com. The topic of today's conversation is regarding a new approach to management of erectile dysfunction. It's to entice the urology community to begin to think beyond drugs and pumps. I'm a urologist in Frederick, Maryland. I am also a, a senior investigator at uh, several universities, including uh, Tulane University, Johns Hopkins, and currently involved in research. Uh, many uh, urologists, uh, neurophysiologists, uh, scientists, psychiatrists believe that there are th three main components of creating and maintaining a rigid erection, which involves nerves, blood flow, as well as pelvic floor strength and venous occlusion. And ED treatment options currently are limited to oral agents, uh, sexual education, vacuum devices, as well as injectables and surgical options. Especially after radical prostatectomy, we still are having difficulty with improving our outcome of uh, enhancing recovery of erectile function. Uh, surgery offers excellent long-term rates of cancer control. However, we still have a problem despite cavern nerve, uh, cavernous nerve sparing techniques. So nerve injury remains the main cause. Uh, unfortunately, with the current treatment programs for penile rehabilitation, uh, still there's a lot of non-compliance issues. Men cannot afford the oral medications or they don't want to vacuum, use the vacuum on a long-term basis or injectables. Uh, progressive hypoxia related fibrosis of the cavernosal tissue re uh, will eventually lead to veno-occlusive dysfunction, which can cause permanent uh, ED. Erection recovery is a dynamic process, and this has been studied widely in psychosexual, uh, psychosexuality literature, requiring motivation, spousal support, and willingness to take advantage of natural pro-erectile pathways already established in our bodies, including nerves, muscles, and vessels. Uh, neurophysiologists, urologists agree that penile erection is controlled by spinal autonomic centers, the activity of which is dependent on input from the centers in the brain that have to do with arousal and with the sensory fibers on the surface of the penis. Erection is culmination of multiple successful nerve reflexes that initiate a vascular event. Maintenance of erection, interestingly, is also a combination of reactivity of the cavernosal neurovascular tissue, venous occlusion, and rhythmic perineal muscle contraction. The way the issue of cavernosus muscle and the bulbospongiosus muscle are placed underneath the penile shaft is very important during the rigidity phase of erection to stabilize the tunica to prevent venous leakage. Glans penis and the clitoris are paramount in sexual behavior. Millions of sensory nerve terminations, including uh, unmyelinated it and myelinated fibers, including Pacinian corpuscles, they receive information, converge through the dorsal nerve and the perineal branch of the pudendal nerve above and below the penis, to send sensory fibers to the spinal cord to provoke erection. Many of these receptors are very sensitive to vibration. Pudendal nerve is the king of pelvis. It involves somatic sensory of the entire pelvis, including motor to all the sphincters, pelvic floor, and rigidity muscles. Interestingly, pudendal nerve is also autonomic, multiple uh, Cytochemical uh, studies have shown it to be nitric oxide synthase positive, which has a direct role for glands erection independent of cavernous nerve, as well as activating sexual reflexes with communication with multiple centers in the brain that have to do with erection, 
pleasure, orgasm, ejaculation, and state of well-being. Pudendal nerve after prostatectomy is not damaged, um, and it becomes the only reliable form of communication between the penis and the central nervous system. Pudendal nerve and cavernous nerve, interestingly, are actually interconnected, which means that there is certain communications all over the penis and the pelvic plexus, which is underutilized by urologists. Interestingly, pelvic floor muscles are also weakened during prostate surgery, as well as age itself, which play a critical role in creating and maintaining rigidity of erections. Pelvic floor therapy after prostatectomy has shown in a large Brazilian study to improve erection recovery after prostatectomy. Rigidity of erection is paramount for, to, for the muscles to function. In order for erection to occur, the, the systolic pressure of the cavernosal tissue must reach more than 230 millimeters of mercury. This is not achieved by nitric oxide uh, alone. An interesting study by Dr. Tom Lu showed that rhythmic contraction of the pudendal nerve innervated perineal muscles can achieve such pressures. Pudendal nerve is directly connected to key locations in the brain necessary for survival, well-being, and procreation, including thalamus, hypothalamus, paraventricular nucleus, medial amygdala, which is a center of PTSD, depression, and suicide, and medial reticular formation. Currently, more than 5,000 veterans commit suicide a year from PTSD. Many of these patients have severe sexual dysfunction. Interestingly, yesterday there was a large article regarding a recent study of, of high prevalence of sexual dysfunction in men uh, uh, returning from Iraq and Afghanistan. These are young men in their 20s and early 30s with severe profound erectile dysfunction. Unfortunately, treatment of PTSD leads to more ED. Right amygdala is considered an epicenter of, of PTSD. It modulates motivation and mood. Imaging studies of men with combat-related PTSD shows hyperactive amygdala. These men suffer from poor motivation, sexual difficulties, ED, and suicide. 48% of veterans with ED have psychogenic ED. Many scientists believe that inability to deactivate amygdala may negatively impact the supraspinal contribution to erection and pleasure. Now, the question that we ask ourselves is that, is there an element of PTSD in patients after prostatectomy, whether they have hyperactive amygdala? The answer to this question is not known. Pudendal nerve stimulation has shown in several imaging studies to deactivate the amygdala during stimulation of the penis in those studies. The hypothesis is, is can a persistent pudendal nerve stimulation calm down the amygdala and offer clinical benefit for treatment of PTSD and psychogenic ED? Pudendal nerves and evolutionary benefit of stimulation to improve mood and sexual vigor to pass offsprings may be a thought of evolution. PTSD and neuromodulation is currently a very hot uh, topic in the field of PTSD research, including vagal nerve stimulation, deep brain stimulation, trigeminal nerve stimulation, acupuncture. Currently, pudendal nerve stimulation can also be an, additive, an, an addition to research. Currently, vibrators that are medical grade are Ferticare and the Vibrect. Many of the research on the role of vibration in uh, erectile function originally started in 30, more than 30 years of our knowledge in men with spinal cord injury, in which exposed many profound and anticipated additional benefits, including penile erection, relief of extremity contractions, increased bladder capacity, reduced detrusor contractions, increased urinary sphincter control, increased fecal control, which are all pudendal nerve. Vibrect is currently uh, a, a, the only medical vibrator approved by the 
United States FDA for treatment of erectile dysfunction. It is approved for over-the-counter use. Several research has already been done to prove that vibratory stimulation can actually have erectogenic efficacy, including a study at Johns Hopkins in young men without ED in which they were used in a clinical setting with RIGI scan. Also, the efficacy of the Vibrect X3 was tested recently in Miami project showing more than 77% success rate in provoking ejaculation in men with spinal cord injury. Another study of more than 105 patients revealed that injections of uh, alprostadil after uh, vibratory stimulation can improve e ejaculation response. And also, Vibrect use itself could provoke equal blood flow under ultrasound in a clinical setting. Another study from Denmark using Ferticare showed that vibratory stimulation after prostatectomy can improve uh, in, uh, shim scores after only six weeks of use. This study had limited number of patients, so the p-value was not adequate. Currently, pudendal nerve stimulation has several clinical applications, including a new device called the Pelvic RX, which is the first male pelvic floor exercise program in combination with Vibrec to create what we call erection recovery program. This application of muscle and nerve stimulation can have profound effects in mild to moderate ED. Head-to-head -head studies with PDEF, uh, PDE5 inhibitors are lacking and should be done for first-line therapy for treatment of ED. It also could have applications for penile rehabilitation after prostatectomy, combination with injection therapies, as well as treatment of retarded orgasm and ejaculation disorders. There's a lot of studies currently being set up for randomized prospective trial for post-prostatectomy rehabilitation, as well as PTSD research, which in, in which we hope to start with veteran administration, use of Vibrect X3 and spinal cord injury patients, as well as erection recovery program. Thank you so much.